So you want to upgrade from baseband to IP, but your understanding of what it means is obliterated once you see one of these? Good Lord! Hi, my name is Tyler Purcell from Key Code Media, and if you stick with me, I'm gonna break down what exactly SMPTE 2110 is, what all these acronyms mean, and the challenges you may face on your journey to IP-based infrastructure. And, and don't forget me, Tyler. Jeff Sangpeel here, CTO at Keycode Media. I'll jump in and add a few points. Okay, so for starters, IP stands for Internet Protocol. It's been around for decades as a way to transfer data through a computer network using a set of numbers that serve as your IP address. The technology behind IP has advanced so far that the ability to receive and send data can happen almost instantly anywhere. When bringing this all back to broadcast, a good comparison would be in the same way analog switched to digital. That completely changed the workflow and how things were made and stored. IP video is packetized. SDI is serial digital interface. All them bits in a series. In IP, we are now sending things in packets. Your video is getting cut up, sliced and diced, into blocks and then sent over the network. Now that you understand the basics of what each tech is, let's discuss the reasons why you'd want any of this tech. First and foremost, less cabling and far more control. In a typical broadcast scenario, you'd have audio and video routers plus patch panels. This way, if a router were to go down, you could manually patch the signals. Every device will have multiple cables for in and out connectivity. You'd have audio and video, you'll have sync cables, Heck, even power can become an issue with some remote installs. With video over IP, the bi-directional signals are through a single cable per device. This includes camera control, tally, return video, basically anything you need to send down the line it can handle. Router controls in the network switch using software, making it super easy for users to operate and using redundant network routers provides the necessary insurance that your signal will come through. With NDI networks, many devices like PTZ cameras can be powered off the network cable. This means setting up a camera is one cable instead of many. You got that? Good. I figured I lost you, but... SIMD 2110 is a suite of standards from the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, SMPTE, that describes how to send digital media over an IP network. It's the accredited standard for achieving the same reliability and interoperability that the industry has attained with SDI signals over coax and fiber, but with the advantages of bi-directional communications and data recovery through packeted stream over IP networking. That illusion? The key here is that 2110 does not compress the signal, which is an important differentiation it's baseband video over IP. There are different types of SMPTE standards, a whole lot of numbers, and you probably don't want to hear them all. Not all of that is going to be covered here. If you want to get deep into this, Google SMPTE 2110 suite of standards and click on the SMPTE.org breakdown on this topic. It's also going to be on the SMPTE 2110 Wikipedia page. Now that you have a better understanding of what SMPTE 2110 is and does, let's get to the IP video protocols you may be working with in tandem. IP video and live streaming protocols. When it comes to compressed IP video protocols, it's a lot like video and image file types. Here are several protocols available, each with its own strengths. Let's start with the number one compressed over IP video standard, NDI. NDI stands for Network Device Interface. It comes in two flavors, a standard and an HX version. Standard NDI and NDI HX is a lot like the difference between H.264 and H.265. They both have very good quality, but H.265, of course, can be squeezed down quite a bit, which means that your bandwidth is a lot lower with H.265, even though it's retaining really good quality. During the transmission process, full NDI consumes a certain amount of bandwidth. HD needs about 100 to 180 megabits per second, 4K around 200 to 300 megabits per second required. But with HX, you can reduce that in half. One of the really great things about NDI is that you can use regular switches. So we recommend just a standard gigabit network. It'll work totally fine as long as it's isolated from other network traffic. It's also gonna be worth the note NDI bridge, which helps you connect NDI networks over the internet. We're escaping the LAN, which has been traditionally a limitation of NDI. 
NDI Bridge lets you securely connect two entirely different NDI networks together anywhere in the world, full management of all audio and video streams automatically, no matter how many sources. You just use one publicly available IP address as the host, and any number of networks can connect and share their sources and allow teams of any size to connect from anywhere on the planet. So after NDI comes SRT. It stands for Secure Reliable Transport. SRT is a transmission protocol based on H.264, H.265 compression, so very similar to NDI. The focus here is delivering high quality video over the internet. So what makes SRT pretty crazy is that it uses an anti-packet loss mechanism. So that means that it has built-in error correction, which is great. But it's important to note that SRT transmission applications require a fixed public IP address on either the sender or the receiver. So now that we got the video side covered, let's talk about the audio side. Because, you know, we can do high quality audio embedded in video, but what do we do if we're just doing audio? And what if we want to do multi-track audio, right? So the answer to that is called Dante. So much like the other video-based IP technology, Dante is the same, but with high quality multi-track audio. Dante has become the industry standard and you can buy everything from mic preamps to DSPs to mixers and recorders, which all have Dante integrated into them. This way you can run a single network cable between devices and no more massive switches and routers and patch panels and stuff like that. Plus with Dante Bridge, you can send Dante encoded information over the internet to clients worldwide. Dante has been a game changer in the audio world and has been a bit more adopted than the video IP systems like NDI and RST. Another note, Dante is actually now beyond just audio. Audinate recently introduced Dante AV. The standard of Dante AV goes well beyond in its high quality video and low latency. There's a lot to learn about this one. Visit audinate.com's website for more information. All right, that's it. Thanks for sticking with me through this deep understanding of IP video from the inception of where the science was born to the development of their use cases to the future troubleshooting that's bound to happen. I hope that some of this makes things less confusing for you. So the next time you're looking to evolve your workflow and you need some help, contact us here at Key Code Media where our team can keep you ahead of technology. My name's Tyler Purcell, I'll see you next time.